We send our salams to our Imam, Imam Zaman Ajarallahu Farjahu Shaheed. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the blessings that He has given us. Tonight we are starting a new topic, and that topic is characteristics of the mu'mini. There's some particular characteristics they are only in some individuals. There's a huge difference between Muslimin and Mu'min. Muslimin, they might do the prayers five times a day, but the Mu'minin, they take it to the next level. They want to complete 51 rakats every single day. They live with Imam, Imam Hassan al Askri, Salawatullah, Salawatullah. When the Imam is asked, Who are the Mu'mineen? He says, Number one, they complete 51 rakats every single day. This includes all the sunnats, and this also includes Salatul Layl. The Mu'mineen are the ones who complete 51 rakats. Then the Imam says, the Mu'mineen are the one who carry around Turbatul Hussain. Wherever they go, wherever it is time to pray, they make sure their sajda is on the pure sand of Karbala. That's the second sign. The third sign, now we go into a sermon or a narration. From Imam Ali Salawatullah was salamu alayhi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali. There's a man by the name of Hammam. Hammam comes to Ya Ali. Ya Ali, what is the characteristics of the Mu'mini? The Imam mentions to him about 127 characters. Inshallah, we will men mention very few every night. And we will see where the topic goes. For us tonight, the third one and the first one from Imam Ali. Imam Ali says, no matter where they go, the true Mu'minin and Mu'minat, they always speak the truth. They always speak the haq. Many of the times when our brothers and sisters, they're ready to get their kids wed, 
before the wedding, they describe them in a particular way. My son is like this. My son is like that. But in reality, it's nothing even close to that. Before the marriage day, explain to them his knowledge is so high that if Einstein was alive, he would ask them for me. That's because they want to land that marriage. Do not lie about your children. Do not destroy the lives of your children. They have to live these lives. So protect yourself, protect your children. Wherever you go, you are always speaking the heart. You are always speaking the truth. The second one, the Imam says, and the fourth one for us tonight, they spend their nights in ibadah. One of the best ibadah, my brothers and sisters, and this is the first condition. In order to join the Imam's army, Imam Zaman, inshallah, in order to join the Imam's army, the first condition is salat. One of the conditions of the Mu'mineen is Salatul Layl. Seventy different people came to Imam Jafar Sadiq, Sadiq Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Muhammad. Seventy different people. I do not have enough risk. I have back pain. I have knee pain. I have distress. My children do not listen to me. The life is not going the way I want it to be. I have too many enemies. I do not know what to do. Seventy people came and there was only one answer. Salli Salatul Start praying Salatul There are some amal, my brothers and sisters, which are life changers. Some amal can completely change your life. Just like there are some amal, if you do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will prolong your life. And then there are some bad deeds. If you do, Allah Azza wa Jal cuts some years off of you. Allah. I will mention them in the nights coming. Salatul Layl. There's a man by the name of Asbagh bin Nabata. He lives in the time of Amir Prophet Muhammad and Amir al Mu'mineen. Salawatullah, salam, jamia, inshallah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. I have given you six narrations on salawat. Today is going to be the seventh one. Rasulullah was asked, Ya Rasulullah, who is Abkhalun Nas? The most stingy person on the planet. Ya Rasulullah, who is the most stingy person on the planet? The Rasulullah says they do not share their money now. The Rasulullah says no. Rasulullah says the one who listens to my name and the name of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad and they do not recite salawat. They are considered the most stingy person on the street. <laughs> Moving along, Ashbag bin Nabata, he lived in the time of Rasulullah and Amir al -Mumin. One day, he asked, Ya Rasulullah, can you please tell me when I am going to die? <coughs> Rasulullah says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept, it, he kept this treasure hidden. Only he knows. Why Rasulullah? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told people when they will live, they will spend most of their life going against him. And then in a few months, they will start doing ibadah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows people better than they know themselves. So Rasulullah, can you please tell me when I am going to die? I will give you some signs. He's speaking to Salman al-Farsi, the friend of Aswad bin Nabata. Salman al-Farsi, when will I die? Oh, Salman, you are going to die. I will give you one sign. There will come a time when a dead body, a corpse, speaks to you. Salman al-Farsi used to have a friend by the name of Asbab bin Nabat. Many years passed by. Salman moves away. One day, Asbab visits him. And he says... He goes to the house of Salman, he knocks the door, he doesn't answer. 
the shahan rule is you knock the door three times and then you go home. The third time he knocks, when he's ready to return, a voice comes. Salman Farsi says, Asbal min nabata, I am handicapped. I cannot stand up anymore. Please come inside. He comes inside, they have a conversation. Asbal, can you please do me a favor? Yes. Can you please carry me to the graveyard? I want to see if it is my time to leave or not. His friend carries him to the graveyard. As soon as they are at the front door or the main entrance of the graveyard, Salman al-Fati says, Assalamu alayka ya ahl al All the people who are sleeping in the graves, my salam. An answer comes, Wa alaykum as salam ya Salman al-Fati. If you and I go to the grave and the answer comes, we're going to run away. Right? We will get scared. What is going on? But as soon as he hears the answer, Salman, no. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had told me, if you hear a corpse speaking, it is your time. Oh Salman, I have some things to tell you. The corpse is speaking. The dead body is speaking. What are these things? I will tell you three things. Number one, Salman al-Farsi, when you come into the grave, make sure you bring your ibadah. Sleeping here is not easy. I used to be ghafil. I didn't care about the religion. I didn't care about the Islamic rules. I get punished day and night. Allah Akbar. The second thing, O oh, Salman al-Farsi, one of the best things which is going to take care of you in the grave is your Salatul Layl. My brother and sister, this is a narration I was reading. It's from the sixth Imam, Imam Jafar al-Sadiq, Sadiq Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad Salatul Layl is going to protect you. Some animals will try to attack that person. For example, a snake or different animals come attack. There's a particular nur, that nur is Salatul Layl, it fights it all. Allah. Salatul Layl. The third one, Salman farsi Before you come into the grave, make sure you give some kind of sadqa ijari. Start something. Fund something. Before Eid comes, send a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars home. It's not going to hurt your bank balance. Imagine how much sawab you will get if you sponsor one Eid breakfast, one Eid dinner for those children who cannot even eat one full meal. Imagine how much sawab you will get. Make sure you give sadaqah jari. The mu'mineen are those, this is the second one, the mu'mineen are those who pray salatul layl. Make it a habit. Next story about a salatul layl. There's a man by the name of Rashidi. A much older man. He says, we left from Tehran to go to Hajj. When we were going to Hajj, we stopped in Sham, Syria, Damascus. We stopped in Sham. The caravan leader, he told us, you have half an hour, go do your wudu, buy something, and then we will leave. This man, Rashidi says, it was cold. So we were all wearing our jackets, it's cold. I go into the marketplace and I start shopping in such a manner that I lose the track of time. Yes. When I come back, what do I see? The whole caravan has left. My luggage is there. He says, I am an old man. I have a white beard. I barely can walk. It's winter. It starts to snow. While it is snowing, he says, I pick up my luggage. I have no idea which direction to travel. He says, I start walking a little bit. While I am walking, he says, I remember one speech that the Sheikh gave. Whenever you are stuck anywhere, you have no way out. 
or remember your Imam Imam Mahdi Ajal Allah Fadal Allah Allah Salli Ala Muhammad Muhammad He says I prayed He was a noble pious man He says I prayed Ya Aba Saleh Ya Aba Qayyat Allah Fil Arzi I am a old, I'm an old man If you don't come I am going to die in a few days I want to go to Hajj He says I was walking what do I see? I see a young man on a horse running towards me. I am thinking to myself, it's snowing. The weather is so bad. How does this person know where he is going? I have my luggage. He comes to me. He says, give me your luggage. Allah. He takes my luggage. He helps me. We are both riding. The speed of the horse is so fast that I cannot believe what is happening. When it snow, when it snows, everything becomes slippery, especially the horse's hooves. He says, "I do not know what is going on." We get to a place. He says, "I will leave you here. Before you leave, I will give you three suggestions. Number one, do not leave the Quran, Quran, Quran. Do not leave the Ziyarat Ashura, Ashura, Ashura. Number three, do not." Stop praying Salatul Layl, Salatul Layl, Salatul Layl. He says, I will leave you here. You go straight for a five minute walk. You will meet your caravan. I meet my caravan. I do my Hajj. We come home. When I tell the ulama, this is what happened. They say, you met the Imam. Imam in Zaman. Ajallah. <laughs> Ajallah. This is how much the Imam wants you to do Salat al He repeated it three times. The Quran, Zayat Ashura, and Salat al Mu'mineen are the ones who pray Salat al Moving along, this is going to be the third uh, characteristic of a Mu'min. Or a Mu'mina, their lives are purified in such a way that no matter who comes to them, they are willing to help them. Become someone who is helping nature. Be that helping hand. Make sure you take care of your brothers and sisters. Purify your life. One short story. There was a couple in Karbala. They were about to get married. It's a custom the people who live around you in the neighborhood, you send them cards. The female, the girl, she was very religious. The man, sometimes he was religious, sometimes he wasn't. The girl said, we are about to get married. We must, because we live in Karbala, we need to invite Abba Abdullah and Abu Fadl Abbas. The man says the following. He says, they are at that level and we are at this level. How are they going to come? She says, no, we have to invite them. It's our custom. We must invite these people because they live in our city. They, get, they go, they put the gift card or the invitation card inside the Haram of Abu al The marriage happens. Many days go by and the guy says the following. He says, I told you Abu al won't come because he is at that level and we are at this level. The same night, Allah, listen very carefully. The same night the man says, when I go to sleep, I see a young man, beautiful face, Nurun ala nur. He's wearing a helmet. He has two feathers on his helmet. I ask, who are you? He says, my name is Abu al Abbas. He says, we invited you. Did you come to our wedding? He says, yes. We came to the wedding, but we were standing at the door. Why? Inside, it was a haram mixed gathering. Inside, there was haram music going on. We cannot accept this kind of invitation. We came because we live in your city. My brothers and sisters, are your lives so purified that Ahlul Bayt can come inside them? Is your life, is your business 
so terrified that if the Ahlul Bayt want to come, they can visit us? Or not? Are we clean? Are, or are our hearts that clean that we have the room of the pure and celibates? Allah. Terrify your lifestyle in such a way that if the Imam wants to come visit you, they can visit you. Moving along, one narration from Imam Jafar Sadiq, Sadiq Ali Muhammad. Before I mention that, the fifth characteristic of a mu'min is they do not turn their backs on their Muslim brothers and sisters. Look what is happening right now. La ilaha illallah. Some so-called Muslim countries, so-called Muslim leaders, their dinners are barbecue camels, the whole camel. 50 pounds of grapes, 50 pounds of oranges. And on the other hand, small children don't even have one piece of bread to eat. Allah. They will be at questions, inshallah. That's why we keep praying, Ya Imam, please come. You are the true leader, inshallah. The Muslimin, the Mu'mineen, they do not turn their backs on their brothers and sisters. Allah. They do not make fun of their brothers and sisters. Just because someone does not speak proper English, just because someone cannot afford a new shirt, a new shoes, his shoes are ripped, you are making fun of them? The real Mu'min is the one who would say, my brother, your shirt is ripped, let me buy you a new one. Allah. These are the Allah. Moving along, as I was saying, this is the from our sixth Imam, Imam Jafar Sadiq, Sadiq Ali Muhammad. The Imam says, This is the same exact thing the first Imam says, the Mumini. Take care of the Mu'min. They don't turn their backs. They help them out. Moving along, this is the seventh characteristic of the Mu'mineen. They take care of their wajibah. You and I, my brothers and sisters, you have to have this kind of mentality this kind of unbreakable mindset no matter where I go I am a Hussein Alhamdulillah this is the mindset that you need to have I am at work I am at school I get invited to anywhere in the world wherever I am I am a Muslim I am a Hussein there is nothing on this planet that is going to destroy my iman Imam Ali Salawatullah wa Salamuhu Alayhi Allahumma Salli Ala Muhammad He says there are few reasons that people lose their Iman Number one Haram gatherings Allahu Akbar Especially those gatherings which have the beautiful food of gossip Yes Gossip destroys the iman of many people. Stop gossiping. If someone asks you, how is Quran bin Quran? Instead of going on 30 minutes, Quran is like this. I <laughs> like that. No. He is a good moment or moment. That's it. Allah. Mu'mineen protect the other mu'mineen. In another narration, when the imam explains the characteristics of a mu'min or mu'mina, the seventh one. They do not become the slaves of the world. Allah. Some of our brothers and sisters, they have become slaves of money. Career only. That's the only thing I focus on. Business only. That's all I need to focus on. My friends only. That's the only thing I need to focus on. There's nothing wrong with having money. There's nothing wrong with having good business. As long as you have your ibadah, they know. The Ahlul Bayt, they want you to become successful individuals. They want you to have successful businesses. 
They want you to have communities in which we have, mashallah, millionaires, inshallah. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as you do not study yourself. Many of the brothers and sisters, our fathers, our forefathers, when they came to this country, there was only one vision and there was about money. Many of those, I can give you many examples of brothers and sisters who only focused on career, 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 business, 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 Shias. Today, their children have become atheists. Today, their children have become Hindus. Jewish. I can give you many examples. One of the brothers, we grew up with him. But the problem was his parents, they never wanted to support the Hussein way. They never had this understanding that we need to take our children. The point of these majalis, my brother, is number one, to motivate you to keep doing better. Make sure you keep doing ibadat. And number three, to save yourself and save the next generation. So one of the brothers that we grew up in, his parents, they had a different mindset. We don't need to go to the Husseiniya. We don't have to do anything. Everything will be okay. <laughs> Two years ago, the, the brother calls me. He says, Alhamdulillah, I got a job. I said, MashaAllah. May Allah bless you. Where do you work? I became a bartender. <laughs> SubhanAllah. I said, my brother, after standing there for eight, whatever hours you do, seven, eight hours a day, you stand there in that mahal, listening to that music, seeing those people, do you really think you are going to come home and pray Salat al No. Obviously not. Right? So my brothers and sisters, the seventh is, the characteristic of Mumin is, they protect themselves. They do not let the ibadat go. They do not sell themselves no matter what. And they do not become the slaves of the dunya. Last uh, characteristic, and this is also a narration from our third Imam, Imam Hussain sallallahu wa sallamuhu alayhi wa The Imam says, most people in the world have become slaves of the world. Deen is only on their tongue. Allah. When they are tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only few will be left. Only few will be considered the Mu'mineen and Mu'mineen. Do not become the Shias of slogans only. It's very easy. Ya Ali, the Beg Ya Hussein, the Beg Ya Ali. It's very easy. Become the Shias of action. Make sure your action represent who you are. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq that we can follow the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt. May Allah accept our ibadat. May Allah forgive our sins. May Allah forgive the sins of our marhumin marhumat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq of Hajj Umrah Ziyarat on a yearly basis. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq when the Imam comes, we can be a part of his army, inshallah. We will end with du'ai Imam Zamana. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma.